Greetings, and welcome to an online gallery talk at the Gregory Alacar Museum of Art. I am Abby Rose, Colorado State University's LEAP Institute for the Arts intern and curator for women's textiles across Africa, the symbolic and the practical. I will be your guide as we tour the exhibition space and discuss specific objects and themes from the African Permanent Collection. The goal of this tour is to acquaint visitors with the objects as well as discuss the features that help shape the exhibit. After the talk, I encourage you to visit the virtual exhibition for additional information and a closer look at the objects. Victorian era ideologies often place Africans on a lower racial stratum than their Western counterparts. Vast collections of textiles, sculptures, and other objects of visual culture from indigenous artists were quickly dismissed from serious contemplation within an expanding art scene. However, these misperceptions ebbed in the late 19th and 20th centuries when European modern artists and art collectors bore witness to the magnificence and importance of African art. During the mid 20th century and beyond, African art has established agency and legitimacy within the community of artists, historians, museums, and collectors. One of the principal contributors to the production of art across the African continent are women. As I researched the textiles and beadwork for this exhibition, I found that each piece was impregnated not just with feminine power, but with creativity, stories, and even mathematics. Thus, my aim as the curator was to introduce visitors to a selection of textiles from across the African continent, highlighting the importance of women artists in society. As you will see, each textile offers a glimpse into local traditions either in daily lives or ceremonial practices. This exhibit is broken into four sections, Central Africa, the Sahel, Southern Africa, and finally, Western Africa. The first stop on our tour brings us to Central Africa, home of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a tropical country rich in natural resources. While the textiles of the Kuba and Budi cultures are created by men, raffia palm or bark cloth respectively, it is the painted and stitched motifs done by women that often draw the eye. These pieces seen here emphasize the importance of collaboration between men and women within Kuba and Budi communities showing that both sexes are valued contributors to their artistic production. Next up is the Sahil, an expanse that stretches from Sudan to the Sahara and is home to the nomadic Wadabi. What is most striking about the Garawal ceremonial pieces seen here is they are designed and made by female artists to be worn by men in a pageant to woo the most beautiful women of the opposing lineage. At the Garawal, Women either single, partnered, or married can select a man as their prize for the night or as a new spouse. Should a married woman choose a man, her new suitor must stealthily infiltrate the home of her husband and successfully escape for her to be able to remarry. We move to Southern Africa and the Zulu and the Fangu cultures where beadwork reigns king or queen. Artists from both groups breathe life into the colorful glass beads brought to them by Arab and Portuguese traders. It should come as no surprise that the bead motifs created by Zulu and Mafengu artists tell stories about geographic location, social groups, popularity, and romantic availability. Most notably, Zulu women use beadwork to court a suitor, which shows that courtship within Zulu society begins with a woman's interest and preference. Finally, we come to the Sanufu, Yoruba, Bamana, and Dogen peoples of West Africa. Textiles created across this region reflect a variety of materials, techniques, and motifs, and often play a central role in protection and success within their respective communities. For example, Bamana Bogolanfini are worn during the transition from childhood into adulthood and are believed to absorb esoteric energies that are released during this process. In this case, textiles assist in absorbing these energies and protect community members from potential con contamination. In a similar manner, the wild silk fibers that are woven into Dogon Tombetun are believed to infuse the cloth with powerful energies, make it an appropriate object to signify the union of marriage or for preparing the corpse of a deceased individual for their transition into the afterlife. While Flafani, 
created by Sanufu artists, historically played a similar protective role and visually resemble the Bogolanfini from their Bamana neighbors. One now finds contemporary iterations of this protective textile with fantastic animal Im imagery aimed at foreign consumers. The ability of textiles to provide economic prosperity is also found among many entrepreneurial Yoruba women who have turned their deep blue and white adire cloths into lucrative income by selling them to patrons in local and tourist markets. The sale of textiles in these profitable markets empowers women to support themselves and their families, but also provides a chance for their artwork to be witnessed and treasured in homes and galleries across the world. Thanks for joining me on this gallery talk on the women's textiles across Africa, the mystical and the practical at the Gregory Alucard Museum at Colorado State University. I hope you enjoyed the tour and the ways women enrich the African continent.